Hello dear students today we are going to talk about a very basic but very important topic that is nouns okay now we all have heard about names right that name can be of a person a place a thing or an idea now these names when added up into a sentence are called nouns these nouns are what we are going to study in this video okay now let us jump on to the definition of nouns what are nouns nouns are parts of speech that comprise of words that are used to name people places animals objects and ideas almost every sentence will definitely have a noun and they perform different roles in a sentence okay now from this definition it is quite clear that we are talking about naming of these people places animals objects and ideas right so in simple words what is a noun a noun is a name of every living and non living thing when added up in a sentence that is called a noun clear okay now that we know what nouns are exactly let us talk about the different types of nouns right now there are basically nine most important kinds of nouns that are used in our everyday environment and in your examination setting so in this video we are going to talk about these major nine kinds okay namely these kinds are proper nouns common nouns singular nouns plural nouns countable nouns uncountable nouns collective nouns concrete nouns and abstract nouns let us discuss these types in detail to understand each one of them distinctively let's start with the first category that is proper nouns okay now what are proper nouns those nouns that provide a description a description of the people places ideas and objects that we discussed before are known as proper nouns now let us take an example of these nouns to understand better okay consider this statement mohan has a ford car in delhi now in this statement mohan is the name of a person right so it is providing me the description of that person similarly ford is the brand name of the car right so it is again providing me the description of the car similarly delhi is the city name in which the car is belonging to so that means that is again providing me a description of the place right so these kind of specific names that provide description are known as proper nouns now the opposite of these proper nouns are common nouns these kind of nouns provide a generic idea generic idea means a very general a very brief of the people places and ideas and objects right there is no description provided for example if i have to write he has a car now in this sentence he and car are not providing me any description that means these are common nouns clear okay moving on to the next category is singular nouns now what are singular nouns these nouns refer to names of single person place object or idea this implies that these nouns only refer to 
individual identities right i hope that's clear now whether that identity be a name of a place or a person or a thing that identity has to be individually present let us take an example of this now the book is placed on the desk now in this statement if we look carefully the word book and desk are individual identities right so that means that these nouns are singular nouns right now to the opposite of that are plural nouns what are plural nouns these nouns refer to names of multiple people places and objects right so whatever we are talking about in plural nouns are not individual identities rather they are multiple identities right an example of such noun would be the books are placed on the desks now in this statement it is quite clear that the words books and desks are what they are multiple identities they are plural nouns right moving on to the next category is countable nouns now what are countable nouns the nouns that can be counted or measured nouns that can be counted or measured are known as countable nouns this means that these nouns are quantifiable right these nouns are quantifiable now if i have to take an example of such nouns i would say i have three dresses now in this statement i can see that the word the noun dresses is countable i can count that how many number of dresses are there there are three number of dresses that means the word dresses is a countable noun it is a quantifiable noun right okay again there is a contrasting category to these kind of nouns which is uncountable nouns right so these nouns are not measurable and similarly they are not quantifiable this implies that these kind of nouns cannot be measured and they cannot be quantified under no circumstances right so an example to such kind of nouns would be i have a lot of homework okay now in this sentence the noun a lot cannot be measured and cannot be quantified right so this noun is an uncountable noun clear moving on to the next category which is collective noun now what is a collective noun these nouns refer to naming word that is used to denote a group okay now this group can be of people places or objects if i have to name an example of a collective noun i would say a flock of sheep okay now in this example a flock 
is what it is a group name that has been given to a group of sheep right so a flock here is a collective noun moving on to the next category which is concrete nouns now look carefully and try to understand the meaning of the word concrete it means something that has fixed boundaries right something that has clear boundaries right now nouns that are material based material based and that have fixed boundaries are known as concrete nouns why because these kind of nouns are easily perceived by humans these nouns are easily perceived by humans right so that is why these nouns are known as concrete nouns now let us consider an example of this noun to understand better okay consider this statement hardy writes with a pen in his notebook okay now in this statement words like pen and notebook are easily perceived by human beings right you can easily understand the meaning of the word pen and notebook so these nouns are what these are concrete nouns because they have fixed boundaries they have a clear vision in the human mind okay moving on to the next category which is abstract nouns now these nouns are what these are contrary to concrete nouns why because they cannot be easily perceived they cannot be perceived by humans why is that because these nouns are not identified are not identified by five senses the five senses that you own cannot identify these nouns that is why these nouns cannot be interpreted by the human beings easily okay an example of such noun would be honesty is the best policy now in this example the word honesty think about this word this word cannot be perceived by humans right until and unless you put a practical use to this word that is when you show honesty then only you can understand its meaning otherwise it cannot be identified by you it cannot be touched it cannot be seen it cannot be felt until and unless you utilize it in a practical purpose so these nouns are known as abstract nouns okay students i hope all of these nine types of nouns are now clear to you let's move on to the next topic which is nouns as different components of a sentence now there are major three components a noun can represent that are noun as a subject noun as an object and noun as a complement let's dive into details of all three components to understand better starting with the first one noun as a subject when a noun acts as the doer of the task that is being carried out in the sentence or in simpler words when a noun acts as the main character of the sentence it takes up the form of the subject of the sentence okay generally this appears in the very beginning of the sentence that means 
a subject will be written in the very beginning of the sentence and it can be identified by asking the question who who did the task who is the doer right now let us take an example to understand this for example i say bruno went to the park now in this example bruno is the doer of the task what is the task going to the park right now who went to the park bruno did so bruno is who bruno is the subject of the sentence now in this sentence the noun bruno acted as the subject understood moving on to the next type which is noun as an object when a noun acts as the affected thing person or place affected thing person or place in the sentence that the doer or the subject is affecting then that noun takes up the form of an object of the sentence okay these kinds of noun generally appear in the latter part in the latter part of sentence that means in the very end of the sentence and they can be identified by asking the question what what is being affected right now if i have to take an example of this i will ask where is your book now in this sentence if i look carefully and i look at the noun which is book this noun is being affected in the sentence right they are asking about the book's location the book's position so what is being affected what is being affected the book is being affected so the book here acts as an object in the sentence whereas it is the noun but the noun took up the form of an object in the sentence okay moving on to the next type which is noun as a complement now when a noun is used to modify when a noun is used to modify or describe another noun another noun when a noun is used to modify or describe another noun it acts as a complement to that noun understand this with the help of an example okay if i have to say Jawahar Lal Nehru was the prime minister of India okay now in this sentence jawahar lal nehru in this sentence if i look carefully jawahar lal nehru is a pronoun right and prime minister is another noun that acts like a complement to the pronoun here okay the word prime minister the noun prime minister acts like a complement to the pronoun jawahar lal nehru who was jawahar lal nehru he was the prime minister so complement or the tag can be given to another noun when we are talking about a pronoun here right so that is what is called noun as a complement these are the three components of noun acting in a sentence i hope that is clear okay now concluding with the final and very interesting topic of this video let's talk about multiple functions performed by nouns 
what are the different functions that noun perform okay so noun generally performs two functions that are noun as a verb and noun as an adjective right now both of these forms are adopted by nouns when there is a slight modification in the spellings of the word slight modification in spellings of the word okay when there are slight modifications in the spellings of the word there is a different form taken up by the noun it can act as a verb or it can act as an adjective now this phenomena will guide us to identify whether it is a noun a verb or an adjective okay now let us start with the first one right which is noun as a verb okay we all know that verb symbolizes an action taking place when we're talking about verbs we're talking about some action taking place right so this means whenever you find a noun spellings altered to such a form that it now depicts a work or an action taking place that noun has taken the verb form whenever you see that the spellings of a noun are slightly modified and they now depict an action taking place in the sentence that noun is now changed into a verb okay let me explain this with the help of an example look at these sentences do you like my dress now in this sentence if you look carefully the word dress is a noun right the word dress is a noun whereas if i write another sentence i am dressed and ready to go okay now in this sentence the word dressed the spellings of the word dress in the first sentence are slightly modified to the word dressed here now in this sentence dressed is not a noun it is what it is a verb because dressed is an action taking place someone is getting dressed that is an action taking place right so the spellings of the word dress are modified to change the form of the noun similarly a noun can also act like an adjective okay what is an adjective do an adjective highlights the key points of a noun right an adjective highlights the key points of a noun so whenever a description is provided before or after a noun almost every time that description is an adjective okay and an adjective can also be produced by changing the spellings of the noun slightly now let us clear this with the help of an example consider this statement she is excited about magic and i will write another statement which is the experience was magical okay now in both these sentences the words like magic and magical are two different functions of noun we can clearly see that the word magic is slightly modified into the word magical right but in the first sentence it represents the function of a noun and in the second sentence it represents the function of an adjective because it is telling us about the noun experience that how was the experience we are getting to know about the how factor how was the experience this is a description magical is a description that came after a noun so this is an adjective 
But in the first sentence, the word magic is a noun. Right. So this means that even the slightest modifications can result in the complete change of form in the case of nouns. Okay students, I hope you people have now understood how to crack nouns in your school and competitive examinations like CAT. Much more content about this topic is uploaded on the Edurev app. You can find out more about nouns by checking out the CAT course here and then clicking on the verbal ability and reading comprehension section. On scrolling, you will be provided with the section of English grammar. And you can see topics like nouns and many other English grammar related topics. You can unlock the locked videos, documents and tests of the complete course with the Adorive Infinity Plan and ACER exam at less than 80 rupees a month. Thank you.